I'm ready for some high school football on New 12. Let's go, baby. Yeah. Right, what right, we right, practice right, for. It's the state quarterfinals. Three more wins, and you get to capture a state title. Okay. But you have to survive and advance first. Time to see who is knocking the stuffing out of each other on this fourth round playoff edition of the Blitz. Havelock back in the Eastern semifinals for the first time in four years. The Rams hosted the defending 3A East champ from Northern Nash. We find out who is still standing tall after this heavyweight battle. Undefeated Clinton has not been challenged all year. Could Nash Central be the team to outrace the Dark Horses? Number one team in the state of North Carolina. You looking at it? And Tarboro looked to win its 30th straight home playoff game. East Bladen was looking to end the Viking dominance in Edgecombe County. So loosen up that belt a few notches, so you have room to gobble up all the leftover highlights. Let's start now. Right, here we go, the final blitz of 2023. We have the state quarterfinals tonight. I'm Brian North. This is Luke Schwartz. Uh, you can button your jacket. I can barely do mine. <laughs> Two more weeks until we crown state champions. Havelock hoping to be one of those teams. The undefeated Rams hosted the defending 3A East champs from Northern Nash. And what a game we had. Our Mac Daddy's Blitz Premier matchup. Packed house is always at Rams Stadium. And a good start for Havelock, third play of the game. Jonathan Williams, who didn't even start the year at quarterback, but boy, he's really learned the position well and trying to catch him. Couldn't catch him in a phone booth if he tried. 68 yards, 7-0 Havelock on top. Nash Central did tie it up, or Northern Nash tied it up at 7. But then check out LeBron Sharp. You saw this at practice the other day. Oh, man, he can throw the ball. He can run it. Ooh, what a nice Halfback catch. option to Jaheim Waller. Havelock up 14-7, and the Railbirds were pumped. And then how about some defense? That Havelock D has been so good all year. Samaj George tips it up and then takes it to the house. Havelock was up 21 to seven. And to add injury to insult, Elijah Pitt, the Northern Ash starting quarterback out with an ankle injury, did not play. So the backup, Tristan Sigger is going to work. The lefty, oh, he can chuck it a little bit. Looking for Randall King and watch the deuce. Take it, split the defenders and go all the way. Cut the lead at 21-14. Brett Wooten and the Rams trying to answer, but here is your turning point in the game. Late in the second quarter, Williams looking to throw. The pass going to be tipped. Randall King is there to intercept it. Now, it looks like his leg is down, but see the official behind him never calls him down. King says, all right, well, I'm just going to keep running until they tackle me. He gets down inside the 10-yard line. Then two plays later. Havelock D coming up big. Watch Marion Frazier go in and strip the ball, but listen for the whistle on this. Whistle came in late. They called him down. They would end up scoring on the next play, and the Rams never recovered. Kenton coach Ryan Gieselman listening to Garrett Wingett talk about how he was Northern Nash's offensive coordinator last year and how he used to give the ball to Dewan Mitchell. Mitchell. 67 yards in the first play of the third quarter, and they were up 28-21. Havelock offensive coordinator Caleb King trying to get his offense to answer, but whoops, they had trouble holding on to the ball all night. Three costly fumbles, and Northern Nash recovers again. Mo not happy because he would watch Northern Nash turn those turnovers into 35 unanswered points. Randall King was a man possessed on both sides of the ball. Another touchdown reception. Richland's coach Pat Bird says, yep, I saw this in the first week of the playoffs when we lost to Northern Nash. And he watched Northern seal the deal with a couple more picks, including who else but Randall King. 42-21, Northern Nash goes into Rams Stadium and ends Havelock's season. Yeah, I mean, you know, the guys just, uh, they, they responded to the challenge, you know, couldn't be prouder of our quarterback, uh, Tristan Siggers, and offensive line, ran the ball well. That's what we knew we had to do to win the game. Proud of them for doing that. And Defense. Won, and won the turnover battle, which was Yeah, absolutely. Turnovers are huge. Obviously, in a game like this, defense played what they needed to do, especially getting the turnovers for us. We made some adjustments at halftime and hit us uh, over, some over pursuit on defense. And you know, ultimately, as a head coach, I've got to do a better job changing it. They hit us the first drive and hit us again the second and put us behind the eight ball. Um, so I take full blame for it. Those kids played hard. I, lo I love those seniors, and it, it's it's, it's going to be tough for the next couple of days. But I'm, when you look back, I'm going to be really appreciative and thankful for all the great things the senior class did and all the great things this team did this year. Tough way for Havelock to end a great season, but Northern Nash next up, they'll play the winner of Southern Alamance and 71st. 
and the Falcons, also undefeated, they would host the Patriots in Fayetteville. The only name you need to know in this game is 71st DeAndre Nance. That was his second touchdown of the night. But guess what? Number 11 just wasn't done, and he said, actually, Two sounds good, but let's ramp it up to number three, his third touchdown of the night. But this was a really close one between the Falcons and Patriots. Game on the line. Falcons make a deflection in the end zone to seal the game. A 32-27 to victory in 71st is moving on. And they'll host Nash Central in the 3A East Final next week. Let's check out the 3A West Regionals on the Connecticut Water System scoreboard. Your top seed crest falls to Dudley. The Panthers pick up the 12-point win. Next up for them, they'll travel to Hickory to take out the Red Tornadoes, who took out West Henderson 28-16. We have plenty more highlights to show you, including the 2A playoff games. But first, it's our Coastal Carolina Community College fans of the Sands. How about those Northern Nash fans from Red Oak and Rocky Mountain, that area, had their cowbells out with their neon lights, and they were Pumped. They get to play one more week. Whee! All right, thank you for watching this final blitz. The two-way playoffs have been a gauntlet, except for top seed Clinton. The undefeated Dark Horse's closest games this season, a 26-point win over Princeton. Ooh. Princeton has won its 13 games by an average of 52 to 11. So how would the 9-1-0 All-Stars do against Nash Central? Well, they started out pretty good. Josiah Robinson's going to go 30 yards for Clinton. But boy, they were in a dogfight until late in the second half. They finally pulled away and won this one 55 to 32. So a closer game. Nash Central gave them everything they wanted early, but Clinton stays undefeated and they move on to the 2A East Final. And next up, they play the winner of Whiteville and Northeastern. Well, in fact, they made the four-hour bus ride to Elizabeth City for this contrast of styles. First, you're going to see Tysel Spencer going all the way down this sideline. No one's going to grab him a little bit on the arm, but he says, get off me. That's a touchdown right there. Northeastern would go up 7 to nothing. And add into it, how about the special teams right here? A nice field goal that goes right through the uprights, and they're going to lead it now 10 to nothing. But Whiteville, Bryant, they kept it close. How about Luke Odham bursting with speed? He's going into the end zone for the score. And now Luke Odom again, the touchdown. No, just kidding. 17-14 Northeastern's going to hold on to this one for the win, and they head to Clinton next Friday night for a battle of 2A East unbeaten. All right, the 2A West playoffs, the Connecticut Water System scoreboard shows us it's going to be Reedsville, the number one seed, has more state champions than uh, state championships than any school in North Carolina history, and they're going to take on the Shelby Golden Lions, another storied traditional program. That'll be in the West Final next week. Hey, we've got a couple more highlights to show you, including our Battle Royale featuring Tarboro and East Blade. But first, our Willis Insurance Blitz Cam taking us up close and personal with that great Tarboro crowd. They're fired up. Wait till you see how they did with Sweet Pea. Boy, Sweet Pea's slowing down. Come on, Sweet Pea, get out there. <laughs> highlights are coming up. Battle Royale, where Tarboro has been dominant for quite a while now. Did you know the Vikings haven't lost a home playoff game since 2013? That's if you do the math, Carrie, the one over three. <laughs> That's 29 straight wins at Vikings Stadium. And pretty impressive because to build on those stats, the Vikings have shut out their opponent in the last four games yeah. this season. But East Bladen was more than ready to change that. 182 <laughs> points for Tarboro to their opponent zip as the Vikings put their own spin on SOB, standing on business. It certainly wasn't a vacation as Tarboro's first offensive play is Mason Satterfield ripping off a huge sideline run to get the Vikes cooking. Satterfield, he did the heavy lifting, but Cameron McDowell Moore punches in the first score. And you're going to see a longtime fan. How about Sweet Pea saying, we here, we're here right now. But East Bladen also arrived in the Torrin Corbett breaks Tarboro's scoreless streak to tie things up 7-7. Seven to seven. But head coach Jeff Craddock, He's not too worried about one score because he knows Cameron McDowell Moore has his eyes set on the end zone and he would break all the way loose. Get off me, sir. 
fired up. He's pumping his arms too. Plus, he's going to show all of you some love watching at home with the heart. But the Eagles aren't going away. Mazion Brooks with the toss on third down and long, stretching it all the way. And we've got a tie ball game 13 to 13. All right, Tarboro then goes up 20 to 13 after the third quarter. Into the fourth we go with minutes just left on the clock where a theme develops. Personal foul late on third and 14. Then Tarboro would have to punt it away here. It looks like a regular punt, but there's going to be a roughing the kicker call made. So they would get the first down, try and run out the clock on fourth and one, and off sides. And now the Vikings can run out the clock, and they win 20 to 13, where Coach Craddock was satisfied with the win, but knows his squad can be much better. We have a good football team. We're not great yet, but we're good. Um, well, we're thankful to get to win tonight, and I'm thankful to have another opportunity to study film tomorrow and get ready for another game. But at the end of the day, we did find a way to win the game. We hug in there. Uh, we closed the shutout in the second half, which was important. We kind of limited what they could do and uh, got our offense rolling a little bit, and we did enough to win the game. Next up for the Vikings, the Vikings, but it's 12 and 1 West Columbus for next Friday. Let's show you West Columbus in the East semifinals for the first time in school history. They hosted Wilson Prep and Unique Kelly, their quarterback. Uh, he's had a unique season. Again, school history being made there. He's going to find Tristan Freeman. Now that's a touchdown, and West Columbus gets the win over those West uh, Wilson Prep Tigers. 21-16, so West Columbus at Tarboro next week. In the 1A Western Regionals, it was Robbinsville, the number one seed advancing. They're going to take on, who else but those Mount Airy Granite Bears. In the 4A East Regional Semifinals, our bonus game. Let's start with Hoggard from Wilmington, whose only loss this season came to Cleveland, who they faced again in Clayton. And what do you know, the second time was the charm. Hudson Willem to Anzion Session, and Hoggard did it. They went at 51-35. Now they'll play Cardinal Gibbons, who also said top seed Rollsville. So how about that? Well, in the West, it is Weddington, the top seed advancing, where they'll take on Independence, who beat Butler. So there you go. Final episode of the Blitz, but we'll still have regular sports and cover all your football teams all the way to the state championships coming up in two weeks. Ooh, just two. One.